So today we are releasing WolfQuest version 1.0.5, which features multiplayer. It's out now on Steam and through the WolfQuest game launcher. If you purchase the game on itch.io, it should automatically update. So with that out now, I would like to show all the multiplayer specific features that everyone should be aware of. So first, in new game, you can choose to create a multiplayer game or join one. When you're creating one, there's a number of different options here for the mission and map and access. If you want to become to everybody or just to your friends in the game, or you can choose certain friends or you can choose one or more packs that you've created. Um, the number of players from two to eight. And very important here is the latency that's shown in parentheses in the region. You want to pick the region with the lowest latency. Latency is also called ping, and that's basically the time that it takes a piece of data to go from you to the server. And these are in milliseconds, so the bigger they are, the longer it takes, and the more likely there will be glitches in multiplayer, teleporting and rubber banding. So as the host, you should pick the region with the lowest latency, which is most likely where you live. And then if you're joining a game, well, Dawn is just breaking now on the West Coast, so nobody's up and playing WolfQuest yet there. Here we go. So here, you should also look at the latency because you want to pick the one that's lowest, which is generally going to be also your own region. Now notice that the latency here is greater than what you saw when creating the game because this is the latency for you as a person joining the game to the multiplayer server plus the host's latency to the multiplayer server. So those two added together. So it's bigger, but this is the actual latency you'll have in the game. Ideally, you'll find one with uh, latency lower than 150, but sometimes, like here, you don't always have perfect choices. But look them over and choose the best, because that is important along with mission and map when you're choosing a game. Now, once you're in the game with other players, one thing you want to do fairly often is pack rally. If you play the old game, it's basically the same. If a couple players start howling, then you get the pack rally meter there at the top of the screen, and most players need to join in howling and howling, only howling now. Like in the old game where play bows and other things would work, this is only howling and get that meter to fill up, and then everybody gets a stamina bonus. It lasts five or six minutes, and you can tell that it's in effect because there's this howling wolf head stuck onto the edge of the stamina meter, and it'll stay there until your boost expires. However, if any player dies, it will expire then. So, so if you're using that stamina boost during hunting or fighting other wolves, you want to stay alive to keep it in effect. So if you're in that new multiplayer mission, Territory Quest, here finally you can claim territory because you have a pack of wolves, a few wolves, if not up to eight wolves, and uh, that's enough to uh, claim and hold territory against all the stranger packs out there. So the best way to do this is to create a scent post, which is a fixed marker that you want to come around and mark repeatedly as the days go by. And so to do that, you mark and uh, you only get a small percentage of uh, territory strength from that, just 1% if you've got a fair number of players in the game. So then you mark again on that same spot, and that converts that simple territory marker to a scent post, which boosts your claim a fair bit. And uh, let's see, there it is, whoa, too close. And then other players have to mark that too and build up the strength of that post. The more players you have, the more players need to mark the posts because the potency of each marking is weaker with more players. And so it really works out best to travel together when you're maintaining your territory so everybody can mark and reinforce those scent posts. So you can deploy your numbers to maximum effectiveness. Now, if you bite off more than you can chew and get yourself killed, instead of uh, reloading a save as you do in single player, we have a new revive function. There's a countdown, wait 10 seconds, and then you can revive yourself. Now, if whatever killed you is still hanging out right in front of you, you might want to wait until they wander away. They should pretty soon, usually. Sometimes you might have to be a little patient, but it is best to revive when there's nothing waiting to kill you all over again. Now when you revive, you have very, very low health. And so we have another new feature for multiplayer only, and that is the quick heal. If you've got enough food in your stomach, you can lay down to rest, and then press and hold the quick heal button. That's the R key on keyboard. Hold that down, and your wolf body will use up some of those food reserves to, to restore some of your health. Now you can only get your health back up to 40%. After that, you're gonna have to restore your health the old fashioned way by getting more food and resting and sleeping. But that should be enough to get you back on your feet and functional enough to be part of the pack. Now, if you're really foolhardy and get yourself killed again, you may have enough food left in your tummy to restore some of your health, but probably not enough. And then you really are hard up. <laughs> and that's when you really hope you have good pack mates who will go hunting for you and save some of that carcass so you can go fill your stomach and then sleep it off and uh, get back to full health. So we think the quick heal is an important thing in multiplayer, but it only goes so far. You still have to behave you know, fairly prudently as a wolf or you are going to be hurting four days 
running scared anytime you come across a threat and your pack mates may or may not be thrilled about taking care of you for that time. Now we've got a pretty big map in Wolf Quest Anniversary Edition, seven by seven kilometers. And so if wolves spread out, they naturally lose track of each other. And so we've decided to replicate this in the game. So once you get about two kilometers away from another wolf, they won't appear on the map anymore because you don't know where they are. And how do wolves find out where each other is? Well, by howling. So if you lost track of somebody, if they howl, they'll show up on the map. The marker will show up there for about a minute after a regular howl. But if pack rally is in effect, if everybody howls, then the markers will be on the map for that full duration of pack rally. So that's just another way we're trying to get people to think like a wolf. And finally, the new uh, continuous day-night cycle is one of my favorite aspects of Wolf Quest Anniversary Edition. I feel like it really increases the immersion and the feeling of just being out there in Yellowstone. But it did create a new challenge in multiplayer because we need to keep everybody on the same time of day. It's 11 a.m. for one person, it needs to be 11 a.m. for everybody. And since we accelerate time when you're sleeping, we really need everybody to stay on the same sleep schedule. So we may add other options for this in the future, but currently the host decides when to sleep. So if the host goes to sleep, everybody needs to sleep. And so you'll get an alert saying, it's time to sleep now, and you have 30 seconds to stop and go to sleep. And if you don't, then you have another countdown, and uh, if you don't stop and go to sleep, it will be, well, I guess I won't say put to sleep, but you will go to sleep automatically. And if, in this case, you've run into a dangerous area like stranger territory, it's not safe to sleep there because a stranger is going to come along and wake you up, and that's going to wake everybody up. So you'll get teleported back to uh, be near the host when it's time to sleep. So that is something of a compromise, and we know that there are other play styles that players like, and uh, we are thinking of ways that we can accommodate those as well. So those are the new features that are specific to multiplayer, and uh, we've been in beta testing now for over two months, and we think it's in good enough shape to release. It is still a beta because we still have quite a few things on our list to do, but now it'll be a beta for everybody to play. So there's still some bugs to fix. There's more refinements. There's some smaller features and such still to come. But multiplayer really is why Wolf Quest has survived for 13 years now and it's back. So rally your pack. Woo!